everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome back to West of Loathing. Okay, it's time to get on with the main story. Whatever the hell the main story is, because I haven't got a goddamn clue. There's been so many things to see. Here's another one, the Humming Cave. Like, of course I'm gonna go to the Humming Cave. How can I not go to the Humming Cave? My door's open. So I'm gonna go to the Humming Cave. Ah, where, oh, goddamn, it's way up there. Better have some goddamn cultists in here. What do you think of this, Gary? A strange noise for listening to, are you hearing? Kind of a quiet humming sound, yeah, I hear it too. What is it? What? I think it's coming from this cave. Huh, these rocks are weirdly organized. It's weird, weird purple grass. Hmm. Thing seems a little weird here. I mean, I'm not any, ooh. That snake ain't gonna let you pass without a struggle. All right, well, that didn't hurt at all. So this electrified snake is just gonna get the shit beaten out of it. What if I poison it? Nah, that wouldn't work, right? No way it would work. Nah, I'm getting the crap. It's getting the crap kicked out of it no matter what it does. Okay, goodbye, snake spleen, snake liver. The spleen is the seed of the fiery humors, or at least you've been told. You don't have much of a sense about humors. That's mean. I got a great sense of humor. This item is used on combat. Why does it say, why does a snake spleen set, a, set an enemy on fire? That's amazing. Snake liver. They call this the liver because snakes need it in order to live. Ah, great. Well, I guess I don't need the varmint knife equipped to be able to snake things. Or skin things. All right, well then, did that. That's great. Well, also, what's with this big slab? Might be able to try to push it over. That would have been smart to do a little bit ago. That would have been smart to do before. What? What is that thing? Good question. What is the... Where did I go? Aliens? Are we dealing with aliens? This looks dangerous. What the? A monolith is dark. Oh, looks like there was a huge cave in it at some point. Weird device. I got a strange stone arrow. Okie dokie then. I don't know what the deal if all this is, but okay. Oh, there I go. All right. Well then, I guess we're just, we got a strange device. What does it do? Triangular object made out of a strange stone-like material shot with channels of smooth black glass. Okay, all right, well, don't know what to do about that. Don't know why to do about that. Let me go to my original destination because I don't know what the humming cave is all about. I gotta go to the silver plater. Hopefully get something good out of it. Hey, how's it going? All right, partner. The sign is to reading? It says silver plater. This guy covers things with silver to make them, well, silver. Oh, oh, can man make Gary silver? That would be expensive, and I'm guessing it would probably kill you. Ah, no good that it is that. Indeed. Hey, buddy. Howdy, what can I do you for? Uh, well, what do you have on the menu? <laughs> the menu? What are you talking about? Isn't this a walk-up style restaurant? What? No, I'm a silver plater. I plate things with silver, you know? Oh, I thought your sign was... Never mind. The man grins, revealing a full set of silver-plated teeth. So, you need something plated? What are my options? He looks you up and down. I could plate that hat you're wearing. People with the silver hats get more done, they say. This will enchant your hat to add one to your maximum action points. Maybe something else? You can plate your melee weapon you're using there. It'll do more damage that way. More damage by three. Hmm, maybe something else? You can plate your pistol? All right. Maybe something else? He looks at your pack and mouth. <laughs> hmm, a turnip. That sounds like an interesting challenge. Say, that's a fine looking tongue you got there. <laughs> I, I could plate your tongue. My actual tongue, the one in my head. What would that do for me? I'll come back to you about that one. I, I guess I'd have a silver tongue. Maybe it increased my dickering ability, but I, uh, you know, I'm not, not a hundred. Percent <laughs> sure about that. That's that's weird. Also, why do you want to plate my turnip? I didn't know I need to plate that. Good thing I didn't eat it, I guess. Alright. Strange stone arrow you found just starts going crazy. Beeping and booping and whirling around of its own accord. It practically drags you in the direction of a strange, decrepit looking house. Guess I'm going to this house then. The professor's house. The beeping machine leads you to a ramshackle house in the middle of a desert. All right, okay, Tim Fleur, you calm down there. It's your partner. Ah, a house where the beeping blocks is living, it must. 
In a manner of speaking, I, I guess. All right. Anything else out here? Youch. Ah! Alrighty then. Books are so boring it's a wonder the shelf isn't full of holes. I get it. This appears to be an extremely powerful magnifying mirror. Basically an inside-out microscope. Check yourself out. The microscopic mites that live in your eyelashes seem to be getting along just fine. Great. Professor's toilet isn't in very good repair. Wee hee hee! That was fun. Glad I flushed that. Great. Map ante with circles and lines. Excuse me, my name's Mumfler Fumperdink. What? Oh! I didn't notice you come in! I'm not used to visitors, but folks generally call me the Professor. Is there something I can do for you? Well, I found this bleeping gizmo and I sort of followed the bleeping and it led me here. Well, I'll be! It certainly led you to the right place, young man. This is El Vibrato Technology, and I happen to be as much an expert as anyone alive today. Oh, what now? El Vibrito! They were an ancient race that lived here long before humans. Well, they mostly lived underground, so they might uh, still be living, as far as I know. Never seen a peep of an actual person, though. Just the machines they left behind. Were they space aliens? Could be aliens, or genius pre-humans, or an entirely different terrestrial evolutionary line. At this stage of investigation, it's impossible to say, isn't it exciting? Here, let me have a closer look at your bleeping gizmo. Ah, as I suspected, this is one of the transponders. It detects other El Vibrato technology and homes in, you see. That's why it's led you here. I've got a thing I've been trying to repair. He tinkers around with the transponder for a bit and then plugs a strange stone marble into the socket in it. There you go! Good as new! Just swipe up or down to turn it on or off. Swipe. Now I gotta warn you, this device will lead you to abandoned El Vibrato technology, but it might also attract unwanted attention. From what? From the El Vibrato technology! You'll see what I mean, just be careful. Okay. You know, now that I think about it, you've arrived at a perfect time. In order to get anywhere further with my research, I need more samples of El Vibrato tech. Uh, but searching eats up all the time I could be using for researching it. Ah, I get you. Right. You're the adventuresome type. So bring me back whatever devices you find, and if I can get them back up and running, that'll benefit both of us. <laughs> All right, deal. Great. First priority, we'll be getting the Keystone Fabricator running. They lock the doors with these things in little stone alloy blocks, see? No, oh, if we can make our own, that'll open a lot of doors for us. Literally and figuratively. All right, what do you need? The components aren't rare, at least as far as priceless alien technology goes. Bring me no. Oh, about five handfuls of scrap. I should be able to salvage the last parts if I need from that much. Roger that. Okay. His books are all about concepts too advanced for you to even recognize. Oh, things. Such v looking at various things. You said it, I guess. This guy doesn't sleep very much. Treasure contains exactly 10 instances of the exact same shirt and 20 identical sacks. This is a professor's keystone fabricator. He's waiting on some parts to finish it. Hint, hint. Okay. Took in the hint I did, I don't know why, but I'm gonna go to my DESTINATION! This is Fort All Dead. I'm gonna go to Fort All Dead. You find a liquor cabinet in woods. Maybe there used to be a house around it. Try opening it, but find it locked. I need those. I don't have as many locks as I need, so I'm gonna leave it be. Cause I need to- Oh, I need to take a pick down to the other fort before I go down here! That's what it was! I remember Fort Cowardice! Whoa. Oh, okay, monster. Oh, 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 oh kill it! Crap! <laughs> well, it's dead, all right, well, I got scrap, that's good. Well, that makes my life a lot easier if they just come to me. All right, let's go, I guess. Tumbling away. All right, let's see if we can open this goddamn door. Boink! All right, going in. Oh, hi, how are you? How, how are you? Probably shouldn't open this pie safe. Whoa! Buddy, buddy, boo, buddy, bumbly, boo. The goblin is seated at his desk, is repeatedly firing his pistol at the pie safe. Hello, what are you doing? Shooting pies, always, always shooting pies. Could you elaborate on that? Why shooting a pie? Yes, to destroying, obviously, must to destroying a terrible pie. What is wrong with a pie? Bah! Human will never understand him. Ask again. No, really, why a pie shooting? Shut up! So much angry. Keep trying. Look, I'm pretty sure the pie- being a pie is destroyed. Destroy a- huh? 
Look, so many holes in a pie safe. You winning, a pie is dead. You certain being? Waiting here, I will check. Hey. Peek through the bullet holes. Yep, that pie, oh, whoa, was shot to hell. All right, got that. Hooray, you are a success. A pie is so very destroyed being. I, I doing it? So much doing it. But now what? Huh? What I shooting now? Uh, I guess you finding another pie? What, there are more pies being? Yes, a world is full of pies. Oh no, this violencing will never ending. Sorry, being, not wishing to enabling this behavior. No, this is my cross bearing. I must go and continuing the flight. Okay, thanking you. Okay, I wish you good luck. Don't know why I'm gonna intimidate you, but here I go. Wait, leaving a hat here. It will not be safe being. You, yes, good, you protecting a hat for me. All right, General Gob. Guess I'm the general now, that's, that's nice. Contains memories of violence and more recent memories of violence against pies specifically. Ooh, I do like that, ha oh, I, I do like that hat. Ooh, I do like that hat, ooh. Mm. I don't have any spells, but yeah, that might be good, but I think I do have another, uh, somewhere here. Ooh, wait, I forgot I had this, give me this. Ooh, thick skin, gore. On its uh, attack of an entire row? That's good, I'm gonna do that. Hell yeah! Unfortunately, you accidentally gore the book into pieces while practicing what you learned. Shit! Didn't mean to do that! Alright, let me see about- where's my skate? I know I have snake skin somewhere here. Uh, I've only got coal snake skin, which increases moxie, which is better for shooting, so... Sure, I guess that makes sense. Alright, there we go. Alright, I got some moxie. Uh, I like my hat. I like it. I like this hat. Ah, it's a good hat. <laughs> but I miss my old hat. Oh damn it! Why must I be cursed with so many cool hats? Nah, I'm gonna go for General Gob's hat. That's a good hat. I like that hat. It's a good. Out with the old and in with the new. I always say. All right, we need to go all the way back up to this fort now, cause that was totally worth going to. I'm gonna go to the railroad camp soon. Oh, dig. What have we got? Oh, that's nice. All right, just sell them. I've got a whole lot of things that I probably should just sell, but I gotta hit the trail and get up there. All right, fort all dead. You come with me. Oh. They are all dead. Should have known that. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, it's a little intense. Where did all their skins go? Well, that's a, <laughs> that's a question, definitely. All right. Well, hello. He doesn't seem to notice you. Beg your pardon. <laughs> excuse me, pardon. Excuse me, excuse me. I'm so sorry about this. Excuse me. All right. Hey, what do we got here? Map of the region. Table is a little model of the region. Turlets. Flush. Flush. Oh no! I can't flush that one! Oh! Whoa, wait, I saw some- whoa, what was that? Hey, I saw that! Rifleman insignia pin, what does that do? Help me shoot better? Oh, cool! But I like my revolting brooch! Is there a latrine here anybody want me to dig around in? Anybody? Anybody at all? Nah? Alright, well, open that one. All right, full canteen. What's it full of? Puts out fires. Okay, all right then. That's good to know. I can lock. Yeah, I'm out of locks. Hup. Well, I got a needle. Open that one. Smelling salts. Golden bones, skull chips. All right, well, that's handy when they give me the stuff that I need to unlock things right then and there. This place is great. It's got so much shit. Food supplies. You pick up a can at random. It'll be the label. Smoked dandruff and syrup. Nauseating. Dehydrated grubs. Salt and skin. Mushy hair oil. Lie treated eyeballs, candied glands, roasted spiders in oil, pureed spiders in syrup, sugar dandruff, jellied bat wings. There sure is a lot of good stuff here. Well, nothing of value, I guess. All right, sure, I'm out of here. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. What's the point of this? What's the point of all this? Dig through, no way. Not without some stench resistance. What? What about my flowers? Don't I have flowers? Don't I have flowers? I have flowers, don't I? Yeah, sweet smelling flowers. Ah, old patrol cap. Oh, but that one's good too. Oh, I like it. Ah, oh, that ain't as good as General Gob. Oh, I like General Gob. Oh, this is bizarre. Why is this here? Somebody left their knapsack on a burned scroll. It's also an evil looking leather bound tome. I'll grab that. <laughs> Introductory next mex. Last thing's a little diary which you decide to leave in there in case the owner comes back. I'm gonna read it. Seems to have been written by one of the necromancer's cultists. He and several others were reanimating the dead soldiers here. On the theory that the best undead army would be literally an undead army. 
The hitch in the plan came when they raised the officers who decided they weren't going to take orders from a bunch of weirdo civilians. The last entry suggests the author and his cohorts were planning on attacking the abandoned or planning on abandoning their station and reporting back to the necromancer, but the entry ends abruptly in the middle of the sentence. Hum, but a hum hum. Okay, well, put that in there. Gives you the grin and skull skill. What is that? Seems like it's probably dangerous. Are you sure you want to read it? I, I probably shouldn't read that. Maybe. Rover seat you found it will let you determine what the rest of the mountains. Hmm. Hell cow energy. Huh. All right. Well, I'm getting somewhere. No name. No name. Pepperoni mold. <laughs> Look at this grave. This mass grave is absolutely teeming with the riflemen. They don't seem to be interested in getting out, but you could definitely jump in there if you were itching for a fight. There's one wandering in the end of the pit nearest you. All right. I'll go in. Ow! What the hell? What the hell, dude? I'll beef up and I'm gonna get you. Bap! Get bapped! Jeez, well there goes Gary. Well there goes you too. Alright. Man, I gotta... I gotta beef up Gary. Gary is not as beefy as he could be. I really want to learn this though. Ugh. Seems like it's probably pretty dangerous. Are you sure you want to read it? Mmm. Ah. Nah, I'm gonna leave that alone probably for the best. Uh, you guys can tell me whether that's a good idea or not. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Alright, let's go to the circus. See what's going on here. Looks like you found the circus those clowns were talking about. Uh, a circus? That's like a clown hive. Fortunately, it's not a very big circus. There probably aren't very many clowns. Certainly not enough for an army or invasion force or anything. Still, since it turns out demon demonic clowns are a real thing, any number of them could be real trouble. You walk up as nonchalantly as possible so the clown man in clowning <laughs> the ticket booth won't suspect you know his horrible secret. Win his whistle innocently. Doodly do to do. Uh oh, white face, not man's. Yeah, and probably a whole lot of them. Not a safe place for going. No, but we probably ought to try. Why? Why do we probably ought to try? It's a northern clown word. I don't want that. As you approach, the clown puts on a basically cheerful facial expression that retail employees use when the last thing they want to do is deal with the customer, but they're not allowed to say so. Talk to him! Welcome to Barnaby Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus sideshow, sir! How can I help you? I'd like to run away with the circus, please! <laughs> Aren't you a little too old for that? Sorry, we're not hiring. Okay, alright then. Let's stop joking around. I'd like to see the circus. Well, you came to the right place then. Ha <laughs> ha! But if you want to get inside, you'll need a ticket. I just so happen to have one. The clown looks very surprised. What? How did you- Oh, well, great. Good for you, sir. <laughs> I'll just take that and stamp your hand for re-entry. There we go. Enjoy the show. What about my partner? Partners, get in free! Thanks. Thank you. Here we go. As you enter the circus, the ticket boost clown shouts, Welcome to Barney Bob's perfectly normal travel show! You walk into the circus. Actually, I guess it's more of a carnival, but let's not split airs. As nonchalantly as possible. There are a bunch of clowns around, working at the booths and so on. More clowns than customers, of which there don't seem to be more than a dozen or so. Which is good, in that it means the clowns can't disappear you as easily if they figure out what you know. But on the other hand, if things go wrong here, innocent bystanders might get caught in the crossfire. Got it. Got it. Condemned until further notice. We encourage anyone suffering from horse bites to consult the doctor. Okay. Mmm. All right, just snooping around. Howdy, fella. Can I interest you in the wondrous and mysterious delights of a sideshow? What do you got in there? Secrets, mysteries, things too weird and disturbing to be witnessed by the light of day. Freaks, not just freaks. Gosh, how much does it cost? For you, 300 meat. For everyone else, 300 meat. All right, I'm in. You won't be disappointed in the event you are disappointed. No refunds. There we go. Okay, all right. Well, going in the... The sideshow tent is fairly large and packed with weird things to look at, like all good sideshows are. A few lanterns are hanging from the ceiling, casting flickering shadows around and making everyone look even more eerie. A clown is hanging out in here, presumably to keep an eye on the exhibits. He grins and nods as you enter. Come on in, take your time. Have a good look around. Just remember, no touching. Okay. This is one of the weird bent mirrors that make you look all crazy. As if there wasn't enough crazy looking stuff around you already. Look at yourself. Yeah! This mirror somehow shows you what it looked like in clown makeup. 
bloodshot eyes stare back at you from a pasty white face painted with an odd pattern of red triangles. In the flickering lantern light, it almost looks like he winks at you. Ugh. All right? Makes you look stretched out and thin. Your limbs twist and writhe like snakes as you move around. It's a bit unsettling, and your muscles ache a little sympathetically. All right? Short, squashed looking, folded up like an accordion. You spend a moment moving back and forth in front of the mirror, seeing how it changes. It's kind of amusing. All right. Howdy, fellow. Welcome to the sideshow. Thanks. What's to see in here? Well, down to the left, we have our collection of spooky warp mirrors. Right here, we have our exhibit of clown eggs and pickled punks. And further down to the right is our freak show. Feel free to explore, and I'll be here if you have any questions. I got a question. What's with those mirrors? Are they right? They call it an optical illusion, as I understand. It has to do with the way the light reflects off of them. I am 100% sure that what I saw can't be explained by the reflection of light. <laughs> no telling what you might see if you look too long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have a closer look. Clown eggs! In the circus community, it is traditional for each clown to paint their chosen makeup pattern onto an eggshell. The clown eggs are archived for future reference to ensure that no one chooses a pattern that has already been used. It is considered extremely taboo to wear the clown's another clown's face. This must be the eggs for the clowns that work in the circus. You recognize a few of them, like the clown here in the sideshow tent, the ticket seller out front. Hey, step back, please. No touching. All right. Okay. Oof. Ooh, what is that? You lean a little closer to inspect the jars. They mostly contain malformed and or mutated animals pickled in formaldehyde. A three-headed kitten, some kind of ferret or a weasel with eight legs. A twisted Mobius loop of snake without a head or tail. Weird, crazy stuff. One shelf seems devoted to huge, gross, pale grubs. Like fat, featureless white worms the size of a sweet potato. The one on the end is larger than the others and has shiny black eyes. Someone has painted his face with an apparent parody of a clown makeup. Close the look. Face away face has been painted with little blue triangles over and under the eyes. The creature has been a long, thin slash of a mouth and well, and the area around it has been painted with bright red lipstick. The black eyes flash red as the thing suddenly thrashes in its jar, spinning to face you and stretching its mouth wide open, revealing rows of yellow shark teeth. You stumble back with a cry of shock. Yeah! <laughs> gotcha pretty good. What is that? Ah, it ain't a real critter. It's made of rubber and clay and doll parts and such. Got an electromagnet under the shelf to move it with. He pushes a little gizmo out of his pocket to show you. Should've seen your face. You about to jump right out of your boots. Ha. <laughs> ha Okay, all right then. Hello. This guy's startling sight, even for a circus freak show. His entire head is one enormous eyebrow, eyeball. As you look him over, he stares back at you. Not that he's got much of a choice. Hello there, I'm Mumfler. How's it going? Can you talk? Guess not! Alright! You move a little to the side and lean over the rope to get a closer look at the guy. He's basically just what he seems to be. A guy with a giant eyeball for a head. You do notice two things, though. First, he has an odd lump at the... Well, what you'd call base of his skull if he had one. A sort of crumpled, fleshy mass the size of a fist. With a squint and some imagination, it almost looks like a crushed, shriveled, vestigial remains of a human head. Yeah. The second thing you notice is that his ankles are locked to the select of his stool and the stools are bolted to the floor. Do you blink? A circus gag. His hands slowly curl into fists and the knuckles turn white with the tension. Okay, alrighty then. The man is neatly dressed, though his suit is a bit threadbare and out of fashion. He's smoking a pipe and leafing through a magazine. When you stop to look at him, he nods amicably. Hello there, welcome to the sideshow. My name's Douglas. Hi, I'm Mumfler. Delighted to meet you. So what's your deal? Why am I in a sideshow, you mean? Yeah, you seem perfectly normal. How forthright of you. Of course, it is only natural to wonder. Wait a minute. You said that last bit without moving your lips. Are you a ventriloquist? Not at all. Allow me to demonstrate. He stands up and turns around. His back is the same as his front. That is, his suit has been tailored for two front sides. And he has another face on the back of his head with his hair cut and parted appropriately. Ta-da! As he sits back down, his knees and other joints crack and pop loudly as they reverse themselves. Douglas winces slightly, though certainly not as much as you'd expect. That's horrifying. Surprising, yes? A bit, yeah. How is that even possible? Douglas shrugs and holds his pipe up to the now back of his head so the other face can take a puff. Are you Siamese twins? Not exactly. It's difficult to describe, I'm afraid. Two minds in one body with two faces? It would be closer to the truth to say two instances of the same mind, with, as you say, two faces. You're right, that doesn't make any sense at all. Other face chuckles and Douglas holds his magazine behind his back. Took some getting used to, and that much is quite certain. Were you born like this? I would rather not discuss how it came to be this way, if you don't mind. Okay, sorry. Your knees must be a wreck. Surgery was necessary to permit them to bend in both directions. It sounds worse than it feels, I assure you. 
Why are you in a sideshow? With a regular suit and a haircut, you can pass for normal. I have a contract! Out of the corner of your eye, you spot the clown making a gesture, but you didn't catch what it was. Douglas clears his throat. Plus, well, it's quite the life, you know. Free room and board, travel the world, and you meet interesting people. Okay, I don't know if I'm okay with that. There's a lady here with her head sticking out of a hole in a large metal box. She nods politely at you. Hello. Hello there, enjoying the carnival? Well, it's interesting. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Can I ask you a question? Certainly. Why are you in a box? First things first, we haven't been introduced yet. Oh, I'm Mumfler. Nice to meet ya. Nice to meet ya, Mumfler. I'm Janet. Hi, Janet. So, uh, why are you in a box? That's a rather personal question, isn't it? Oh, sorry. I'm only teasing, dear. Would you like to see inside? Softly forward. Sure. Janet whistles to the signal the clown. He moseys over. He unlocks a box, throws it open with a theatrical flourish. Inside, instead of Janet's body, you see a tangled, complicated assortment of glass tubes, ticking clockwork gears, and pumps. Liquids of various colors, mostly red, sloshed through the tubes. Uh, what do you think? That's horrifying! Like something out of a nightmare. Yes, that's an accurate description. I'm sorry, I hope I haven't insulted you. No, no offense taken. I've only seen it myself once in a mirror. Took quite a while to get used to. Examine. Woo. 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 Weird, gross. Indeed, educational, anatomical learning. What does that do? Oh! I get to hit harder! How'd this happen? Yeah, it's some kind of terrible accident? I'm sorry, but I can't talk about that. Oh, of course, sorry. It must be a painful memory. Her calmly composed face creases into a very slight grimace as she shoots a sidelong glance at the clown. Yes! Well! Nice to meet you, Janet! Whoa! That is horrifying! Alright, what's up with all this shit, huh? It's, uh... About those people. You mean the freaks? Ain't they a scream? The one with the giant eyeball, that's my favorite. Nice fella, quiet fella. If you have a question about the other two, feel free to ask him personally. I wouldn't want to be telling tales out of school. Since the eye guy can't talk, you can ask me about him. Okay, what can you tell me about him? Not much, I'm afraid to be honest. He joined us, uh, about a year ago, maybe less. Where'd he come from? No idea where did it? you think fella looks like that, you'd have read about him in all the papers, right? Well, yeah. It sure is mysterious. How'd it get like that? Couldn't tell you. I bet you've got a theory, at least. Eh, well, maybe you saw something no fe human fellow should have seen. Why is he locked to his chair? Ah, oh, you noticed that, didn't you? Real shame that his fellow's a bit unpredictable, has a violent spell once in a while. Gosh. Don't you worry not, I'm keeping an eye on him. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I got a question about the eggs. That's a traditional clown thing. There's a placard next to there, explains the details. Don't date it too close. Like, they are souls. What are the things in the jar? That's what we in the business call pickled punks. A menagerie of strange and twisted creatures such as you've never seen before. Captured and preserved and on display for your entertainment and edification. That's how the boss says it. Are they real? As real as they come. Okie dokie then. I thought it was not worth 300 meats. Ugh. Mm. I don't want that. Interested in a toy balloon? How do you make them float? There's nothing to it. Heck, they all float around here. <laughs> uh, how much are they? 30 meat. What colors do you have? They're all red. I'll take one. Okay, all right. Got a balloon. I don't know what a balloon's gonna do for you. It's red. Okay, well, that's... Great. What can you tell me about this? Really, it's more of a carnival, but let's not split hairs. <laughs> what would you like to know? What are your traveling plans? Out of the way. What are your traveling plans? I haven't decided yet. That's why we sat down here somewhere more rural. Keeps things relatively quiet while we scout around, get the lay of the land and all. Where'd you travel from? What was your previous stop interesting? Oh, Northwest-ish. It's a little hole in the ground kind of a place you wouldn't have heard of. <laughs> All right, why is everyone here clown? Oh, it's traditional. When the, what do you call them, rodeos stopped being put on, the rodeo clowns took other jobs at the circuses and carnivals. Over the years, it just became the normal thing for carnies to be clowns. It's a community, you might say. <laughs> yeah. Who's this Barnaby Bob guy? Oh, the boss is a real famous showman! Though I'm not surprised you wouldn't have heard of him around here. <laughs> Got an eye like a hawk and he's a real whiz with those knives of his. I don't miss his show, it's a real highlight of the carnival. Okay, don't like any of this. Any of this at all. Oh, test my aim. Alright, well. Game for the sharp eyes and quick reflexes. Where's the game? All by me, I got a bunch of thick-skinned, underinflated balloons. For 10 meat, I'll loan you a cheap, inaccurate pistol and a pile of badly made ammunition, and your goal is to pop as many of those balloons as you can before the pistol stops working. It's an unusually honest-sounding description. 
I've discovered making the challenge sound exactly as difficult as it is only makes people more determined to be the one who beats it. What well, surprise? A ticket to Barnaby Bob Stage, which is otherwise sold out, so it's a rare catch, my friend. I'll give it a shot. All right. Uh, shoot, shoot, <laughs> shoot backwards and cross-eyed, just the way I like. Bam! You fum awkwardly fumble the ammunition into the pistol and fire until it's empty. At which point you can't figure out how to get it back open to put more in. <laughs> wow! Not a single balloon popped. I did tell you the rules, right? How popping the balloons is the actual goal. Let's try that again. Here we go. I'll give it a shot. Shoot from the hip. Bam! You shoot at the balloons until the pistol jams. You manage to pop a few, but not very many. Clown uh, nods. About average, but not enough to win the prize. All right, then. Test my mind. Oh, I get it. Ah, I get it. Okay, so, all right, what's the prize? Barnaby Bob. I got it. <laughs> oh, all right. Carefully scan the deck of cards. Clown spreads it. Ready? I'll give it just a little bit. Just a, just a little bit. Oh, the clown starts picking cards out of the deck and holding them up with the backs to you. You don't even manage to guess a single one of them. In fact, you can't even remember what the black thing that looks like a shovel is called. <laughs> oh, shit. Let's do this. Give it a lot. Manage to guess a few. All right, whatever. Oh, hi. It's a kid here, searching around with a sad look on his face. You okay? You lose your parents? Lost my lucky bottle cap. You haven't seen it, have you, sir? No, but I'll keep my eye out. It's shiny steel and a little chain. All right, fine then. Whatever. Hello. There's a clown here selling rubber toy balloons. Wait, is it the same clown from before? He looks identical. Is he following me around? Howdy, fella. Anything else I can do for you? Weren't you on the other side? Oh, nope. That's the other balloon guy. We just dress alike and use the same face paint. Did we fool you? It's a sin to use the same face paint. I know that. I know that. All right, what about your circus? Who's this Barnaby Bob guy? I've already asked that. Okay, all right. Okay, well then. That's my mind. Okay. I'm gonna do this. I get it. I'll give it a shot. I got- I'm gonna hit it quite hard. Ugh! Oh, that was very close. Not a grand prize winner, but it's the best thing I've seen today, so it's gotta be worth something. A small plush bear. That's nice. How high is my- oh. oh, I'm very close. Wait. Boink, boink, boink. Hey! I'm strong enough now, baby. Hey, you want me to give me one of these? You want you know, you Come on, let me give it a shot. Hey, extremely hard. You pick the mallet, toss it end over end, catch it a couple times to test its weight, casually slam it into the lever. Ding! Well, I'll be. That's some genuine muscle you've got on you, fella. Oh, no. You got a circus show ticket. The show will be starting soon. Don't you miss it. Okay, go scoop my butt over the show. But sadly, this will have to wait until the next episode. I'm all out of time for this one. So thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Let me know how I'm doing in the comments below and get ready for a show unlike any other in the next episode. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye! <laughs>